Last week, I was filming a video at the Society of Illustrators in New York City, and I was captivated by a collection of original children's book art. One painting captured my attention. It was the celebrated book, My Red, White, and Blue. As I researched into the world of this illustrator, I found a treasure trove of compelling visuals renowned for his unique illustrative style. Our guest today has garnished widespread acclaim for his work in Under the Freedom Tree, a moving tale set during the Civil War. His evocative illustrations in my personal favorite book, March On, The Day My Brother Martin Changed the World, have not only received acclaim for his realism, but have also etched emotional depth in the story's narrative. With repeated recognitions from prominent literary and art societies, his dedication to craft is evident. Dive into the artistic universe with us as we spotlight the brilliance of illustrator London Ladd. Thank you, Christopher, for that opening. Um, I appreciate the brilliance. That's uh, I, I really um, am humbled by that because as somebody who has been doing illustration for 15 years and studying illustration since 1995 um all i'm trying to do is just do the work uh continue to grow and evolve as a creator um and just see where my creative journey goes even further um so for me, you know, when I kind of reflect on that and those earlier titles, because March On was my first book out of when I graduated college uh, in 2006, I graduated with my bachelor's in illustration, and I got that contract in February of 2007. Um, so yeah, that book, you know, being my first book, I, I, it was great to do, uh, especially as your first project. Um, to do something about Martin Luther King, let alone written by his uh, oldest sister, Christine King Ferris. Um, so, yeah, I really appreciate it. You know, I'm just continuing to work hard and just love what I do. Keep looking for that voice of mine in my art um, and where I am now. Who knows where I'll be in two years, even six months, um, let alone god willing if i'm still around five ten twenty years london can you take us through your journey into illustration what sparked this passion when i transferred to syracuse university in 1995 uh, before that i was kind of into comic books and, and comic strips and stuff like that and uh i really wanted to when i graduated high school and went into community college and studied art it was mostly with the hopes of being a comic book artist um and then i found fine you know kind of like the fine arts stuff in community college and i was just trying to figure it out and when i had finished my associates i went to i transferred to syracuse university um and that's uh, you know when i had my interview you know one of the professors there this professor just sat and sketched like freehand right from the top of their head you know the basic human form and understanding what illustration is about problem solving and then showed me T. Wyeth and Howard Pyle, J.C. Leyendecker, Bernie Fuchs, uh, like these great illustrators, legendary Hall of Fame illustrators. So I was really intrigued by that. And then when he showed me some of uh, children's books, to me, I was really blown away because I didn't have a children's book as a, as a child. I, I don't even remember. I, I just remember getting the Peanuts Gang compilation books. So for me, you know, when I saw that artwork and seeing stuff, people like Jerry Pinkney and James Ransom, um, you know, obviously every, Ezra Jack Keats, you know, just seeing this artwork that's just gorgeous and the storytelling and the representation as well. Um, I was really intrigued because, again, when I when you do look at comic books, it's mostly white. You know, there are some black characters, but they're very secondary characters. They were mostly white. Um, you know, there obviously there were people of color, minorities, women, but far and few. 
back in the early 90s. So for me, I was really intrigued by the storytelling element of it. It felt cinematic in the same way, like the illustrator was like almost like a director. So for me, that was that really sparked my initial passion. Um, it was beneficial because I was going in cold you know and figuring and discovering artists and discovering techniques and learning and really really s mimicking what i saw really a lot of like more style like very tightly rendered realistic representation and that's why you see the early stuff of mine being very like with march on under the freedom tree like those first seven books although from march on to midnight teacher they're very tightly rendered and, and acrylic i think the biggest spark is just problem solving storytelling and creating art you have a responsibility to an author's words if you're using author's words you also have a responsibility to the art director and the editors who hire you uh you have to the to the publishing house of there's so many people there that you know you're working in tandem and team with but the most important thing is for the young people because of the fact that it could be their you know mental health haven it was like it could be something like if they're lonely if they're feeling certain ways like that that can really help them like it helped me as a as an only child those pictures and those words really helped them like read and comprehend and let and, and it helps build towards their life trajectory there's so many things that spark me <laughs> so it's like i can go in so many ways i can talk about the question one forever um christopher so uh yeah i'll, I'll stop that one so we don't have like a, a five-hour interview what challenges have you faced in your career and how have they shaped you as an illustrator first like challenges is industry change because i was started in the in the 2007 so by the late 2000 aughts because of the economy a lot of the publishing houses merged it was more challenging to get those jobs i had to get an agent to help me get more work because the work was drying up like pretty much by 2009 for me even though i had to march on and oprah the little speaker like i i needed help to, to kind of maintain my career um uh, challenges also you know working with an agent my agent Lori Nowicki is great um we butted heads at first but she she was right in the advice the challenges of being open and receptive to criticism in the sense not criticism and critique but really evaluation of me and and then being humble to be like you know what okay I'll, I'll listen and so that was there was challenges there then um maintaining work in the 2010s um because I, I was lucky enough to get under the freedom tree linda ham frederick's journey you know i was getting jobs uh and they were great projects but at the same time you know the challenge came where i was starting to get fatigued from doing all of the civil rights and civil war slavery stuff i was i was getting tired of that because i felt like i was just getting typecast um and then life challenges you know just what are you dealing with tragedies and traumas and then finding really saying i want my voice to be something more true to me i gotta evolve um and then really taking pushing fear aside so the challenges of fear pushing that aside in grad school and really doing trying to push myself in creative and colorful and, and more abstract ways so you know all of that has shaped me to where i am now it's made me a better person it, just in general and the people that i care for it made me a better made me much more creative as a as, a, as an illustrator it made me uh be a better instructor to others and a mentor to others if i because i teach now at a college um it made me really look and evaluate art all art and really see what i can take from so you know all the challenges have only sharpened me more and maybe a better professional and a better man a better better partner better father better friend of all the projects you've worked on, is there one that holds a particularly special place in your heart? 
I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's easy to say my first book, you know, March on that special, but I I really believe the project. Like, it was my grad studies that I did, you know, because I got into grad school, you know, by forty seven years old, and I'm a working professional. But I pushed art aside and said, you know what, I gotta go into this cocoon like a caterpillar and figure things out. So the stuff that I really produced throughout grad school especially like if you see like the one picture uh, of the little boy looking out of his of his window and you see like the comet going across the sky and that one project was called adventure and that was very um very autobiographical because i just remember being that child looking out it and wondering and, and thinking what is out there and really that was when i was in grad school i was really using a lot of the cut paper techniques that i'm using now that have become pretty much my my love um and just that was like the real first like oh i think i got something here something is starting to happen so that one is uh is very special i love black gold I love like the, the the three books, my three most recent books, because they all mean something to me. Because they're all so special. I, I I can't separate the three of them because they to me they are almost like my my Lord of the Rings Tolkien. I mean, I love Black Gold because it's about love. I love my Red, White, and Blue because it really is. I you know I'm I'm somebody like that that really has that complicated relationship with the flag. I love being an American and I love the flag, but there there was still hurt and pain behind what that flag represents as well. And I love You So Black because it's like I've struggled with black identity and doing that book was like me really coming to terms that I am black and I am black enough and I should love who I am as a as a as a man of color. What books did you read as a kid? that inspired you or left a lasting impression you know i will say as a young child it was like it was like when i had that collection of comic strips of the peanut gang because to me like i said earlier as an only child and i don't and my mom we, our family was very dysfunctional so it was just her and i pretty much um like she would buy me she bought me those books and she knew i loved them so i would have those and i would reread those at all times and i used to laugh and, and i really loved that world and i used to love when the charlie brown car, you know cartoons would come on because i felt like the the comic strips were coming to life so i would see the you know the the, the christmas special the halloween special there was a couple other ones like like about snoopy that i loved and then as i got in my teens it was like the marvel comic universe especially with spider-man because spider-man was a teenage kid who had identity issues in the sense he and guilt issues uh making sure that his aunt may and people that he cared for were you know if they were in danger that he would help them and take care of them can you give us a sneak peek into any upcoming projects or collaborations you're excited about i'm excited about everything <laughs> Um, I'm doing, I got a lot of work I'm doing right now, as you can see, but you can't see too much behind me, but I'm doing a book on uh, civil rights icon, Merle Evers. She's the wife of Medgar Evers. Um, that's a, I knew of her before decades ago. So to do this book and I, I just and even research her more, I'm excited to do this book. I'm doing a book on spirituals, which I studied in grad school in more in depth and had a greater appreciation of them. I'm doing a, a book, uh, The Gathering Table, which is about the Gullah Geechee culture down in the south eastern states of the Carolinas and Georgia. I'm doing uh, Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, which I'm thrilled. Um, I do editorial stuff, especially for Scientific American. I mean, everything that I'm doing is is great. Uh, there is like those are the sneak peekiest things that I can give you. Oh, I finished a book about black hair called My Hair is a Book. I'm excited about that one. Um, very excited actually. That comes out next year because the artwork has been sent about three months ago. So that one's in it right now. It's the work, the book is being made as we speak. I'm also excited about teaching in college, just as helping you know students find their way. So, you know, I think being somebody at 51 years old, I'm, I'm living my best life. Um, and I, I cannot be any more thankful for 
everything that I'm doing. For aspiring illustrators, what piece of advice would you consider paramount for them to keep in mind? What piece of advice for aspiring illustrators? Um, let's see, I'm dealing with a bunch of aspiring illustrators. You know, I think first and foremost, be good to yourself. You know, you know, art is, uh, there's a lot going on in the world. And I think beating yourself up and thinking, oh, where is my style? Or where am I this? What am I going to do with art? What about AI? What about that? that, that I, try not to worry. Just do the work. Just create, have fun, learn, grow, you know, commune with other artists. You know, yes, there's AI and there's all this stuff out there, but the beautiful thing about being a person is you can go and, and fellowship with other artists and sit and draw and create and, and listen and, and share and, you know, just look and, and be inspired by life. Like, that, that's, a, that's the one thing that I can say is because then, you know, and I teach a class called, you know, visual voice because the thing is when I was in grad school, that's what I was without even ever know this school, this class wasn't available when I was a grad student, but my goal was to just find myself and to be the truest represent, have my art be the truest representation of myself. And it takes time and it takes practice and it takes experimentation. And I think that's what I would tell aspiring illustrators is don't stress it. Just, just get into, just do work. Just, just, just learn, grow, see, feel, live life. Um, and as you create, you'll be inspired. You'll, you'll be challenged. Um, and you can always turn the page and do another drawing in your sketchbook and do another painting. And there's always something to learn. At least just started. There's a start. That's what I would say to aspiring illustrators. Just start. Um, and it'll, it'll all, you know, come into place with the time, with the dedication. Because um, I, I, I get projects. Um, you get a commission. You get paid to do these projects. But the thing is, the amount of time, and it goes into research, sketching, revisions, doing color studies, doing um, the final art. It may be below minimum wage, but you're doing it. You're creating and you're, you're just living and loving what you're doing. And it's the love of the craft that pushes you through. As we reflect on our conversation, it becomes increasingly evident how integral illustrators are to the world of literature. They don't just provide visuals, they craft an experience, taking readers on a journey that transcends worlds. London Ladd, with his exceptional talent and dedication, stands as a testament to the power of art in storytelling. In a realm where imagery and narrative intertwine to ensure that tales are not merely read, but profoundly felt. We thank you, London Ladd, for sharing your insights, inspirations, and journey with us today. Thank you very much, Christopher. I appreciate it. This has been a great experience. And, um, you know, uh, I wish you the best in what you do. You're doing great work. Um, and I'm just thankful like, to be in this industry where you meet people that I would never have met and the passion. They share the same passion of creation and books and stuff. So thank you as, as well. I, uh, I appreciate the kind words, as, you know, and uh, looking forward to hopefully maybe someday meeting you in person soon. I would love that opportunity. I really appreciate it, and I'm, I'm thankful to be here.